Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Friday the 16th of August, 2024. I am Del Delbridge of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is your status chat. I apologize if I stumble over words. We've got a lot to do and I'm going to try to talk fast and not take up too much of your time. But we're going to start from the worst and try to end on a good note. If you ever read the book, Eat the Frog. It just says if you got something unpleasant to do, you'll dread it longer if you put it to last and dread it least if you get it out of the way. So we're going to eat that frog and look at some, some things in the news and see what a difference a week makes. If you like this content, please go to calldelltosell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. Now, if you've watched the last several episodes, we've been hearing a lot of noise as we have since December of 2023. Fed pivot, Fed pivot, rate cuts, rate cuts. And all the people that said it was we're on the verge of it have been 100% wrong the whole time. They may be wrong again, although I think they're probably got better odds this time. What I fear is a deep rate cut, which will trigger a subconscious or conscious either which way a feeling of panic through the markets and through everything and us as consumers i think we'll get a little bit of that bite thinking this is real this time we really are in recession we're going to get it can remember a couple years ago when the gdp dropped negative two in a row that's 180 days and it was recession and then they say, oh, no, 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 it's not recession, not recession. We, we, that's, that's always been that way, but not right now. It's not what we're going to do. And then they went back and revised a quarter to just zero, so it wasn't negative. And they fiddled the numbers to keep people confident. And we've been buying ever since. Inflation has continued to go over the last two and a half years, particularly. It's gotten bad there. It was at one time 9%. They redefined how inflation was calculated, effective January 1 of 2023. It's now 2024. After they redefined it, have you notice the inflation has gone down on the charts it has but in my pocketbook i think it's going on pretty pretty heavy and that's watering down our dollar and our purchasing power our dollar has moved higher this week which strengthens it which i think diminishes the chance that we're going to have more yen carry trade pulled out of our stock markets and our bond markets as people have to pay off the yen loans that they took out to buy american i think that is a positive sight but there's going to be some negativeness in it so let's go right over to the main screen going out of business googling going out of business we've had a lot here lately now some of this is not necessarily a bad sign for the nation it's a bad sign for the ideology of the blue cities and blue states and how they run you know uh, defund the police and everything else it's horrible on social level and it's taking a toll on businesses such as Rite Aid all Michigan stores. notice how they say Michigan didn't say all Rite Aid stores all Michigan stores will be shuttered by the end of September it's in Michigan 52 minutes ago CNN here that was from the Detroit Free Press CNN big lots closing hundreds of stores after warning it could go out of business now I saw something on Gavin Newsom this a little bit a while ago that said Gavin Newsom I haven't verified it is doubling the cost of electricity in California now let's talk about why that might be true. Well, I'm not talking politics. I'm talking people ticks, which is people, how economics affects people. Now we know California is having terrible troubles with everything. This is California. It's having net migration out of California. People who can't afford to leave are leaving. And we know that we've had the issue with this green energy because it doesn't work and they can't they're putting so much money into green energy that doesn't work that they're not keeping up with basic demand. They've had some brownouts and at, through the time period. And with Gavin's intention of eliminating gasoline cars and going all electric, they're going to have to put those vehicles on a grid that can't handle the air conditioning. So he's going to have to invest in that. So it would make sense to raise electric rates in a state that needs to reinvest in usable energy if he spends it on coal i know they hate coal if they spend it on nuclear which would take a long time to get built if they spend it on the uh, steam from the gas natural gas it's a fossil fuel that could be done very quickly as well as coal plants can be done fairly quickly i think gas is quicker because it's, it's a little cleaner Nuclear is clean, but it takes a long time to get done. If they're putting the money in that stuff and not in this pie in the sky, floating solar cells and bird killing windmills, 
yes, that might be a good use of money. But if it's killing California, factories don't work, computers don't run if they don't have electricity. So it says the power keeps going out at the port of Los Angeles, raising worries about the green future. Well, it's more significant to me that it's the port of Los Angeles. That's where we have so much goods coming to the United States through the port of Los Angeles. We don't need any more ships hitting any kind of infrastructure. Maurice Vaughn Furniture going out of business after almost 50 years. Now, I've heard of Vaughn Bassett Furniture. Maybe Maurice Vaughn is related. Maybe that's part of one of the companies. That's two days ago. CNET has SunPower, major solar installer. That's some of this green energy nonsense coming up. The installer went bankrupt. What now? Well, it's always said that the, that the strength of your warranty lasts in the integrity and strength of the, the company. If the company goes out, who are you going to go for? Whoever maybe picks up the pieces. Stores closing include Dollar General or Dollar Family Dollar, not Dollar General, Family Dollar, Express, and Macy's in 2024. Badcock, it says, is going out of business. Another furniture. I thought most of these furniture was actually imported from Asia. Maybe we're losing the, the rest of what we have. Wayne Gang, Chappie's going out of business. Bob Stores announces going out of business. It's the same thing we're seeing all over. Bad news, bad news. People are going out of business. Now, keep this in mind. People do go out of business. Now, in one of those, it took them 50 years to go out of business. We kind of expect most companies to go out of business at either the beginning of their life cycle or the end of their life cycle. How much of this is related to the economy and not the business cycle within those businesses? So it may not be as bad as it looks. It may be that these companies just are outdated in their business models. Or it could be the economy. We don't know. But it's something that will wear on your brain and fear you if you don't pay attention to it. All right, let's look at the next thing. We're going to switch to layoffs now. Now let's look at layoffs. Layoffs announced at multiple companies this summer. Ten biggest tech companies layoff in 2024. So far, they put it so far, in, aren't they trying to be helpful? CRN. All right, Des Moines Register. Dan Foss in Ames announces layoffs in agriculture downturn three hours ago. Bay Area loses thousands of jobs in July as tech layoffs jolt the company. We know Stellantis, I think I saw an article this week, that they're discontinuing the Ram truck. Okay, Cisco profits billions and makes thousands of unexpected layoffs. So they're going to their bottom line and shedding, they're trimming the forest. They're getting rid of the trees, the dead word. All right, let's change gears again. Okay, now I haven't had anybody mention this, and I've not seen it mentioned anywhere, so I could be on to something very, very early or way, way wrong. You decide, okay? All right, but how many of you remember the big dot-com burst, the big financial crisis around the dot-com, the recession that ensued? Everything was going this way, we're going, and then it didn't, and it burst because we never did eliminate brick-and-mortar stores. We still have them. We still need them. But it was so much hype into it, it burst. We're seeing the renewables and the green en energies and EVs. They so much hype, and they so much fall. Because, again, it's, it's too much hype. There's more, there's more of gravy than the grave of you. So we know that's going down. We fall into these cycles of overhyping things. I'm not against green energy. I just think that if we can't keep our lights on in California, maybe we ought to put in a natural gas generating plant before we spend more money on killing birds with windmills. That's just crazy me. You know, we've got to keep our, our structures going. And I certainly don't think you can continue pushing cars if you don't have the electricity to charge them. Now, what else do we have that we've seen over the period of time? Right now, I fear that we might have this commercial real estate bust because, you know, one of the biggest things we had just a few years, just not that far ago, was not working on site, doing the work from home experience, because that's what Gen Y and Z said they want to work from home. And they were supposed to be more productive, except that the studies show that they're actually not more productive. They're less productive when they work from home. Imagine that if you don't have somebody kind of in the back of your mind watching over you and some means to do that. So we were building toward toward that. And that kind of took away from the commercial real estate where we were building all these great big commercial office buildings and people fled when we hit the work from home. So the hype of the next big, we're, we got to build these big buildings in every big city, every blue city that we've got, we're going to pack them full because everybody's coming to their jobs. They're not panning out. And we've got a lot of unrealized, over 500, 517 
million dollars in unrealized losses, mostly commercial real estate sitting on banks books today because of that switch. But people still are very reluctant to come in back. And with the interest rates, they're not able to refinance their big gamble in CRE, and that's likely to burst. But a bigger problem than that may be, and this is what I'm leading to, this is the thing that I'm talking about, I've not heard anybody else say, when I look at the dot-com bubble burst and the, the recession that ensued, maybe we might be having an AI burst coming our way because we have put so much. It's just like all these other big waves of everybody. Everybody jump on the train because it's pulling out of the station. Even the Bitcoins and the, and the cryptocurrencies kind of, I think they've kind of peaked out to a degree. Everybody want to get on when it's, when it's something new. They want to get in on the early days, but then it kind of fizzles out. It may be that some of the talk about AI not making money is going to be its downfall. It may not be as profitable as people would have us believe. So that leads us to some major tech layoffs. Let's look at this screen. This is from Information Week. And it even is adding, adding at you right here, AI, 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 AI. But let's see what they say. Whoops. That Brandon Taylor, Jessica Davis, August 10th. That's just six days ago. Let me take it back up to get the headline. Tech company layoffs, the COVID tech bubble burst. Now they're blaming it on COVID. I don't know what I would see coming up is bigger than COVID. I think it's the AI, but they're going to come through here in this article and I'll give you the link to it on the, the page the, that the YouTube is placed on. You can get it out of the description. It says at a glance, they want to blame it on COVID. Updated August 10th with layoffs announcement from Cisco, Branch IO and Dell. Now these are big companies. I don't know about Branch IO, but Cisco is an infrastructure company. When much of the human activity moved online during the height of the pandemic, tech companies were thriving. Call it the COVID tech bubble. Now we've hit the COVID tech bust. They're calling this already bust. I think we're going to have something bigger than the COVID on this. And they basically said, as it looked like everybody was moving out of the cities into their homes, that we're going to have all this need for for routers and computers and stuff like that. And they continue with, now we're going to do the AI. But look at the companies, their layoffs and their sizes. Cisco, just this week, 4,000 employees, 5%. Branch IO, I'm not familiar with them personally, but they're laying off 100 people. Ready Robotics, laid off 100% of their people, which I would call that shutting down or in process of it. Fastly, 11%. Eventbrite, 100, 11% of their workforce. Legal Zoom, 15% of their workforce. Axios Media, 50 people, 10%. 50 people, not a lot of people, but it's 10%. It's about the same cuts that we're seeing. In a lot of these companies, they're cutting about 10%. So the bigger the company, the bigger the cut. Here's another one, 10%. Dell, 12,500, 10%. So I think we look at rounds when they cut being about 10%. If it's more than 10%, something bad is going on. 1,400 employees here at Infion. I don't even know if I pronounced that right. It's a German company, if I remember. Yeah, German ship company. Jam City lays off 85, 10%. Do you see that 10% running through there? So it looks like when things get lean, they try to trim about 10% of the forest out. Cut the dead wood out to about 10%. They're cutting back. But we're seeing a lot of it in tech. And that's a lot of high-paying jobs. We're not talking about gardeners or grocery stockers or stuff of this nature. You know, we're looking at high-skilled workers. And they're seeing some layoffs coming. So that would be recessionary. That's part of what built up the fear that we saw last week. But we're going to see what difference a week makes. Look here. We're going to look at this one. And I hate to cover this again, but it's Cisco. Cisco, San Francisco Gate. It's part of the... Part of that uh, green state and that, uh, that uh, what do we want to call that now? The Silicon Valley kind of area, that industry, that computer industry. I don't know if they're in Silicon Valley, but they're out there towards San Francisco. It's laying off 7% of its workforce. 
announced in a filing with the SEC. They have to do it because they're just that big of a company. They got to notify it because of its impact to investors. That's why the SEC. Now look at this. Look how many 7% is. They've already dropped 4,000 people in the first quarter in February of 2023. Now we're cutting 7%, which is 5,500 out of this quarter. And now this is reported this quarter of 89,000 employees. That's the total. That's a lot of jobs. Can you imagine 85,000 people if Cisco were to totally go under what that would do to the economy? And we're seeing a lot of these big companies with thousands. Intel, I think, laid off 15,000 people. Let's look at Home Depot. We're still we're going to the good. Trust me on this. We're going to go Home, De Home Depot issues a warning about the economy. But first, look up above here. Markets, they're up. All of them are in the green. See? Fear or greed index. It's in the fear. Oh, no, we're in the fear. Well, let's call it uneasiness. Pay attention. Now, this is uh, I want to call it Nathaniel Myerson, Myers John of CNN. I apologize. Three minute read updated uh, Tuesday the 13th, which was just uh, three days ago because it is Friday. And they're going to look at this and say it's because of interest rates. We just need interest rate cuts. Interest rate cuts are going to solve our ills. I think they'll make our ills worse. But We'll find out. Home Depot says consumers are feeling crummy, pessimistic, I'd say, about the economy, and they are dishing out less on major home renovation projects. All right, I guess that I understand that. But for the interest rates to hit them, they must be some pretty big projects. The home improvement giant, a bellwether of consumer spending and the housing market both, lowered its sales expectations for the year. It said customers were spending less on home improvement projects pressured by higher interest rates and concern about the economy is getting worse. I think they're buying less home improvement projects because it's costing them more to buy food and groceries and pay their car insurance and pay their bills and their home insurance. Now, how much would a home improvement project depend on interest rates? Well, it has to be a pretty big one, like a kitchen or bath remodel, because that's where the money is. Right. There's a lot of money in the house, in the kitchens, and the bathrooms. Now, in the kitchen, you've got all of the appliances that usually get ripped out. The cabinets, which are very expensive, they get ripped out. Flooring is very expensive in the kitchen. Any place that has tile, whether it be actual ceramics or rock of some sort, you know, like marble, they're very expensive. They're labor intensive. If we've got that size of jobs getting put on hold because maybe maybe we don't have as much money, easy access to that free money, and our credit cards are maxed now. We'll look at that aspect in just a second, but let's look at NVIDIA. It is a, a bloom in an otherwise brown garden. NVIDIA, which is going to be tied to our central theme of AI, NVIDIA stocks rise. AI chip demand looks good ahead of earnings. And we can see that NVIDIA is now down. It was up earlier. AMAT, it was up earlier. It's down. A AMD was up earlier. It's down. But the NDX, it's up. Let's talk about this. I kid you not. Today, early this morning, I saw a report. And I'm going to get as close to quoting the tagline or the headline or the clickbait, whatever you want to call it, as I can. It said... NVIDIA's new chip may not be as bad as everyone thought it was. And, and, and NVIDIA was on the rise. And I thought, well, now that's to damn with faint praise. It's like someone come in and they say, how do you like your chicken? Well, that's a lot less burned than it was the last time you made my chicken. It's just, it's just, it just struck me funny that they're improving the, the, emotion surrounding the new AI chips by saying it's not as bad as we thought it was. Well, thanks a whole heck of a lot. Do you want to tell me for a fat guy I look pretty good? Anyway, that just kind of struck me funny. Now, NVIDIA stocks rise, AI chip demand looks good ahead of earnings, but we're due earning, I think, at the end of the month somewhere. Uh, yes, the 28th. The stock rise came amid optimism ahead of NVIDIA's earnings report on August 28th. The company is likely to need to beat consensus expectations of earning of 64 cents a share and revenues of 28.6 billion to keep the momentum going, but it has made a habit of blowing past an analyst forecast. So they get hyped, don't meet it, and then they they get forgotten, and then we're back to loving Nvidia. Now in in the computer world, I don't know if you know it, but 
NVIDIA had a, a wonderful product line, the 30 series. Of course, it started with the 10s and the 20s and the 30s were what was going on. I saw an announcement that they're going to, because too many people are buying 30 series, they're going to discontinue the 30s production because they're seeing 30 series undercutting their latest gen, the 40 series, that were priced ridiculously high and people shied away from them. They were like, well, we're, they're good, but they're not worth what you think they're worth. So we'll just keep buying the 30 series. They're good enough. And we like the price better. NVIDIA doesn't like that price, apparently, but the buyers do. So apparently NVIDIA, it's rumored, is going to quit making the 30 series, which should force people to buy the very expensive seven, uh, 40 series, 4060s, 4070s, 4080s, 4090s instead, which should boost NVIDIA's income if people can afford to buy them. Now they also have the newest chip that's on delay. This is a tech delay on the AI chip, but we're also seeing that Intel is having some trouble with their processor. They got a new processor coming out. If we look to AMD that we saw was down today after having been up, AMD has got a processor on delay that, that had a delayed launch because it had some issues. It's not, it's not performing what, it, what people were led to believe. And if you go online, you can see a lot of people say, yeah, it's not living up to its hype, so that may hurt AMD. All of this is building up to a big tech bubble, AI bubble. That's kind of reminding me of the way I felt back in the dot-com hysteria. And it's just something for me to think about. Now, let's go look at some potentially outdated stock market information because we're going to go back maybe a week on this at most. This is August 8th, so that was eight days ago. Yeah, a little more than a week. Stock market today, Dow logs best day in three weeks as labor market data calm recession fears. So it's like if you can speak the fear and buy the fear, if you can sell the optimism, you need to do that. Now, here we go. It looks like the dollar has now come down. Index has come down. We were higher earlier today. As of today, we were up. Now, when the dollar moves up, usually that's a sign that we're gaining a little bit of buying power because our imports, if the dollar is higher to whatever, the yuan, the yen, the pound sterling, whatever it might be, if our dollar moves stronger, that means they're taking the hit on inflation and we're doing relatively better. See money, see net, money, refinance, activity, surges as rates fall. Today's refi rates, August 15th. All right. It was a following a dramatic drop in rate. I don't know if it was dramatic, but they've been easing down as the mortgage industry and others think that we're definitely getting a Fed rate cut. They've already priced it in their rates on for the long end of the curve. They're pricing that in. And so that's what's brought the rate down, even though the Fed hasn't touched it. They're just still in the rumory stage of maybe doing But a lot of people are convinced it's definitely happened this time. Some of those people have been definitely sure it's happening this time since December of 2023. We'll find out if they're right. I wouldn't personally mind seeing a quarter point cut. I wouldn't be disappointed to see no cut. What will worry me is a half point or better cut. It's still worrisome, not as bad as an emergency rate cut, because that signals we're definitely going into recession and that freaks everybody out. And that's usually when people clamp down on their spending and the economy drops and we're already seeing layoffs. So I don't think that would be good. I'm really hoping if we get a cut, it's not greater than 25 basis points. And it's not because I want high rates. I don't want the economy to have any more upset. I don't want to see people lose jobs. I don't want to see the bubbles burst. I would just assume they hold on a little longer. But what we notice in this case is it is refinancing. And since 2022, refinancing activity has gone down in response to mortgage rates. Well, no doubt we were getting massive amounts of equity and people were using their house like a credit card, like a bank to pay off their debt, spending money like uh, those people who play on the water and imbibe in lots of alcohol in copious amounts. We can't say drunken sailors because that's offensive. But here we're saying when you when you spend the money thinking that you're always going to have the ability to refi, to pull equity out of your home, that free money that built over the period of years to pay off that largesse on the credit card, you're going to have a hink in your giddy up just as soon as the rates don't go down. Now they're beginning to tip down. I think this little headline is not showing that real estate's booming really good. I think it's a sign that we're maxed out and people are finally thinking this is about as good as it's going to get. Let me lock in my refi, get my 
revolving debt in hand in or before it, it crashes my credit before it gets totally out of hand let me cash in some of this this value pay that debt off i just hope after that point in time we don't lose a lot of home values because they normally won't let you borrow 100 percent of your equity they'll cut you off at 20 percent or so then that would give them a good cushion to ride out any storm if our real estate values change on us when nobody's looking even if it's just temporary they'll go back up i think in the long run but i think it could happen we could get a lot of people scared just as long as we don't lose jobs. That's a big deal, is losing those jobs. And mostly they're in tech, and a lot of them are in those blue areas. We're in a red state. It's not going to hurt us nearly as bad. All right, now check this out. This is what I'm going to use to justify my fears. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Now, you remember that we have different Fed banks char take charge of certain aspects of watching our economy. The uh, GDP is monitored out of Atlanta section. The St. Louis has Fred, and we have out of New York, microeconomic data we're going to look at this household debt and credit report we're not going to read this i've already talked too long we've got to get going we're just going to look at this big scary graph big scary graph says that we're at an all-time high let's look at the blue line which is not the non-housing debt but the the housing debt is now at 20.9 trillion let's just call it i mean 12.9 trillion let's just call it 13 trillion let's go at the start of this administration in q1 of 2020 let's go on down till we see q1 of 2020 we had 10 trillion plus a little bit and that now we're at 12.9 or 13 so we've gone 13 trillion give or take a little bit in three plus years less than four years we've gone up by three trillion dollars what was it before the big bust of 2008 2010 the cap burst in 2008 and it took us to about 2010 for people to get out of the recession and start recovering but we see about 2008 let me take it to q1 of 2008 we're at essentially 10 trillion in housing debt you see that 9.9 let's go down to q1 of 2004 which would be four years time so in a similar period of four years time we went from six six plus let's just call it six to ten four trillion dollars in four years that's a lot of debt okay what do we have in these four years essentially three trillion dollars of debt that is less than we had running up to 2008 still pretty high but it's, it's still less so that's good if people are able to tap into their refis even if it's six and a half if, if they can tap in at six and a half and they they had it at eight at one point in time that's still less than a credit card they can still afford to pay that off if they use that money that equity wisely that may not be a bad thing so that's something to look forward to now let's look at something else it's going to look awful sketchy it's going to look awful ugly to you when i bring it up when you see the title but it's really not as bad as it looks. Let's look right here. It's from Fred, St. Louis. Delinquency rates on single family residential mortgages booked in domestic offices, all commercial banks. Now, here's what we're talking about. The 2008, we're rolling up to it. We were flat going into 2008. It wasn't until we started to see the mortgages increase that we started to really hit the recession. Now, even after recession officially ended, we were still going up in delinquencies. Took us a while to get our head in order, and we've been good ever since. So now if we go down to first quarter, which is as far as this goes, I think. Let me get it. Yep, first quarter. It's essentially flat. So we're not seeing a lot of delinquencies, according to Fred, in one and two family homes. Not in their mortgages. Now, the credit cards and the car notes and those other things, that may be a little bit different. So if our homes are not at risk of going in and we can bring some of that refi money in and pay off some of this debt, maybe, maybe things are not as stressful for us in the future as it might be. Maybe we can get into 2025, turn the country around, change some of these policies around. Now, one more little bit of ray of sunshine I want to show you is right here. This is a different chart. These don't look as good as the one and two family, the residential, the mortgages. The red line is delinquency rate on credit card loans, right? All credit card loans. And the blue line is on commercial real estate, CRE, excluding farmland, booked in domestic offices. So what we're seeing is, all right, it floats these float a little bit we see the same around the 2008 we've been calm but unlike the graph i just showed you on homes we're seeing why some of the panic has come through look at the blue line the blue line is credit cards 
credit card debt is going up. The link, we're getting delinquent on it. Not only is the values going up, we're getting deep further behind. Now the red is commercial real estate. Now the difference on the commercial real estate is, is those loans are huge. And so that's why so many people are crying so hard, cut rates, cut rates, cut rates, because they're coming due and they've got to do something with it. But credit card rates are also not looking real good. But what is looking good is if we're seeing an increase in refis and people are able to tap into some of that unused equity, it's never good to use your house like a bank. But if you can take some of it out and get current with and maintain current with, your credit cards and your, all of your things, then that's probably not a bad, it's not a great thing, but it's better than if you didn't have that asset to tap into, you can do that. Now, how much of this that we just looked at on the credit cards are for people that don't own a house and have no equity to tap into? It could be a bad time for them, especially if they're in tech, especially if my greatest fear right now is that we see an AI bubble and we have a lot of high tech people lose those high income jobs. Those are going to hurt the economy more. The same number of jobs on the high end, big money hurt the economy more than the same number of jobs when they're low paying jobs. Does that make sense? Like retail, retail doesn't always pay that much. We shut down some stores like Badcock, the furniture stores, those other we looked at doesn't hurt us as bad economically. I don't think as when we lose, you know, the uh, six figure incomes and those people get displaced. And normally if a sector shuns skilled workers, there's a bunch of those same people out there now qualified good candidates looking for jobs so anyway that's it we, we still have some hope coming it's looking pretty good we're we're not looking as recessionary as we did if we can hold off having a big rate cut we held off on the emergency we held off all the foolishness about having emergency rate cuts that's going to be it the big thing to look for is going to be the jolts report that has to do with job loss and turnover survey that's going to come for July in the first week of September. That's going to give us a better idea, a better picture of what the labor market's really doing. Although these recent layoffs like Cisco's and things, they're not going to show up on that because it's July and we'll be talking already into August. So we'll see what's going on there, but let's wrap this show up. Hello, I'm Del Delbert to Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel. Call Dell to sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout, and then call me, and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. I hear you. Wrap it up, Dell. Wrap it up. You've been on too long. All right, you're right. Eight, nine of twenty-four. Last week we had twenty-two thousand six ninety-five opportunities in the real in the Real Scout system. That was up over the previous week. Forty, fifty. One, it looks like, and the under contracts still showing. That was also up a little bit, and it was a ratio of 18 stayed unchanged. This week, 816, we had 22,805 opportunities, which is an increase over the previous period, and 4172 in the under contract still showing. That also increased a little bit, but our ratio remained the same as 18. So you see that nothing really shifted in the ratio so the pattern is about the same we just had a little bit more volume as we go into that they start to see that six and a half rate come down we may see a little bit more activity so don't look at that lower rate it's going to mean that you're going to get a different break on your housing costs or profits either which one because they may bring more competition which would just kind of list that price a little higher or maybe lengthen out the negotiations a little further that sort of thing we don't know how each side is going to react to a little bit lower rate but don't think that a rate is going to save you don't think it will it's not a bad thing but let's talk about it see you next week